going on everybody? I'm Jason, this is Tennessee Mountain Homestead, and today we're gonna do a little bit of clearing. We're gonna clear all this brush over here you see behind me. We're gonna get rid of them logs that we've had over there for a couple years. They're seasoned. We're gonna go ahead and cut those up and split those up. So we're gonna take you all along with us. We're gonna be using some equipment today. We're gonna be using the Kubota tractor, the L3301. We're gonna be using a couple of the uh, mud mowers, the John Deere, chainsaws, all the usual typical stuff that you know, you'd know you use to clear land. So we're gonna go ahead and get right to it. Stay tuned. One of the first things we're gonna do is get the tractor set up. So I think that we're gonna be using the backhoe today to dig out any roots that are left from those trees we're gonna cut down. So we're gonna go ahead and get the tractor, uh, we're gonna get the backhoe mounted on this thing. And I'm gonna show you guys how, how that's done with this Kubota series. So the first thing we're gonna do on this Kubota L3301, and I guess all the L, L series, is right now the three-point hitch is installed from the last time I used it. It's got a trailer hitch on it, and we need to remove all this stuff with these quick, with these quick pins in order to attach the backhoe back on there. I'm gonna go ahead and cold start this thing. It hasn't run in about a week, and then we're gonna pull it forward to make more room in between the backhoe and the three-point hitch so I can get all that stuff off. It is in neutral and the parking brake set. As I said a couple minutes ago, this trailer hitch was on it the last time we used it. So we're gonna go ahead and pull all these pins out. Possibly hurt Stefan in the process. But we're gonna pull all these pins out in order to remove it. Now, on these tractors, there's a cotter pin on this link that goes back here behind the tire. It's really hard to get to. Normally we use a pair of uh, needle nose to pull those out. Let me go grab that. Uh, whenever I pull out cotter pins and quick pins and all this stuff, I like to put these washers, I like to put all that stuff right back on here so next time I go to use it, I don't have to go looking for it. And then also on these tractors, where these, where this, where these other two bottom links Go in, go in here, there's a 14 millimeter head bolt you have to unscrew. Now this whole process is kind of a pain. I definitely don't look forward to it every single time. I have to change from the backhoe to a different implement, but it is what it is. This thing's a lot better with the backhoe on it than using the shovel all day long. And also that backhoe adds a ton of extra counterweight. And then once you get these bolts out, these other pins have a flange on them. You pop them out just like that. See, back in here is what I'm talking about. There's this little clevis that goes back here. And because of the, uh, this, this orange frame piece wouldn't normally be on the tractor. It's only here because it's part of the kit for the backhoe. These orange links are half inch plate and they run all the way up to the front underneath the engine and bolt to where the, the bucket loader um, links onto the frame. So it basically, it adds, it adds a lot of stiffness to the frame because I guess they were having issues before this kit was there with the tractor either bending or breaking or cracking, I don't know. But I know they had to put this on when I bought the backhoe attachment for it. So it makes it, my point is it make this makes it a lot harder to get to this when you're putting this stuff on and off. And it's good to put the pins back in it. Did you put the pins back in that one? Sure did. All right. All right, so now all this stuff's detached. We're going to go ahead and regroup and we're going to back up to the backhoe and show you how that goes on. All right, so 
everything's off the back of the tractor. It's ready to be backed up to this backhoe unit. I'm gonna go ahead and uncouple it because it has hydraulic lines that go to the tractor. I'm gonna uncouple this because I usually plug it back into itself so it don't sit there and drip. So this is gonna be uncoupled. I'll have it laying here on the ground, ready to go. And the tractor needs to be running for intermittent times when this is going back on because you need to be able to manipulate the arm and the outriggers in order to get it the right height to clip onto the back of the tractor. We're going to go ahead and pull these big pins. There's two big pins that lock this thing onto the tractor. Did you get yours off? Sure did. Alright. And with the tractor not running, I'm going to uncouple the hydraulic hose. It's basically, I have it in a loop right now. So, I'm going to uncouple that, plug it into the backhoe. And now we've got the hydraulic circuit for this backhoe attachment in the loop. So now what I'm going to do is crank the tractor back up. You won't be able to hear me too well if I talk, but we're going to crank it up. We're going to pick it up with the outriggers and then use the arm to manipulate it in order to get it to clip. And if you come down here, you'll see these big, these big pins need to go into those hooks there. And then I need to rock it up once it's in there and get these holes here lined up with these holes here and put this pin back through it. Let's go ahead and get it done. So it's not always the easiest thing to do, but with a combination of outriggers and arm, we got the bottom pins resting in the holes. Try to get these pins back in there. And I'm doing that by moving this around. The arm, moving the arm, pushing on the ground. the cotter the big kingpin and there's a hole in the frame for that to go down into so it can't slide out now they're both in the hydraulic lines are hooked up i'm going to make sure that the hydraulic lines are out of the way of any pinch points or anything because that does happen sometimes There's also a little a little catch for the arm. Go around this side. It's right here. So what you want to do is put that down and then take the pressure off the buck, take the pressure off the boom. 
And now when you're driving around, the boom can't just sit to sag down or can't get manipulated by this. So like I said, you want to make sure the hydraulic lines aren't pinched or anything. Alright, that looks pretty good to me. Let's take this thing out there and get rolling. Now that we got the tractor up and running, we're gonna go ahead and start clearing some of this stuff. And I wanna show you what we're gonna be doing before we start. So over here, we've got some remnants of some old trees that we've cut down in the last several years. This here was a pecan tree. And those logs over there were the ones that fell on the barn last year. Well, one of them fell on the barn, two of them I cut down just as a preventative. So they wouldn't fall on the barn also. Anyways, we're going to get rid of these logs. We're going, to, we're going to bring them around the back of the house. There was a time when I thought I was going to cut this thing up for planks and boards. Never got a bandsaw yet. Probably ain't going to happen anytime soon. Plus, it's starting to rot. So we're going to cut this thing up for firewood, what's left of it. We're going to cut those up. We're going to get rid of this stuff. And then what we want to do is all this brush, all these thick weeds. There's thorns in there. I don't know what kind of plants these are. There's a couple of trees that are constantly dropping rotten branches and they're kind of useless. So there's a whole berm. There's a whole berm here between the road and where I'm standing. So as you can see right here, I want to clear all this stuff off. I've been wanting to do this for a while. So with that, we're going to go ahead and get started. I'm going to start taking these logs out to the back behind the shed. I can definitely feel this thing. There's a lot of weight on the front of this. I'm gonna go ahead and creep down this barn hill. I know it doesn't look like it on this camera, but it's going down at a pretty good angle. And that log is probably about 75% of what this thing can lift. So it's better to be safe than sorry on tractors, guys. You don't wanna tip over. You don't want it to get away from you. I definitely got it in four-wheel drive, too. And it just rained out here for like the last two days. So the ground is definitely slick, even though there's a 
little bit of vegetation. We're gonna go ahead and clean all these concrete blocks up. We forgot to bring them out. We have these here to keep the logs off the ground so they're not sitting there moist all the time. So anyways, we're gonna, we forgot to bring some blocks back there to set that log on. So we came back with this tractor. The trusty old rebel. This is the first tractor that I kind of quote unquote built about two years ago. I made this just to do work around here like it's doing right now. Inadvertently, it became a mud mower obsession. how slick it is out here had a hard time pulling that cinder block trailer up that is about all she wants. It won't even hardly move. I had to do all that to manipulate it to get it to go back. Alright guys, one thing about the Kubota that I've always had an issue with is shifting from first to third, or putting it in third gear in general. So what I normally have to do, if I don't want to grind the gears, is turn the throttle all the way down, make sure I clutch it, make sure both the forward and reverse lever on the side is in neutral, and the transmission's in neutral. Let the clutch out, push the clutch in, 
very fast. I put it in third gear, no grinding. If I do it with the RPMs up or anything like that, it either won't go at all or it'll grind. This one is a minor problem. There's no synchronizers in this transmission, but it is annoying. I don't know if anyone, others, anyone else's tractor is like that, but this one is. done with the forks for now we're gonna switch over to the bucket and I'm gonna show you guys how that's done with the quick detach system Ready? Now that we got the bucket back on it, we're gonna go ahead and get right to it. I don't know what it's gonna be like, but I'm gonna try and go ahead and just push some of this brush down and see what is going on underneath it.
right, so the bucket pushing this stuff out of the way worked with limited success. We did uproot whatever tree or scrub that was right there. But all I'm doing is tearing this place up and making a big mud pit. Like I said, the ground's really wet, it's slippery. So instead of tearing this place up, I'm gonna go ahead and switch to the backhoe. I already got the front tires off the ground. When I use the backhoe, I like to pick up the front tires off the ground with the bucket first. All right, so we got all these all these brush and vines ripped out with the backhoe. It exposed a lot of rocks. It's worse than I thought because what I picture this being is kind of like it is down there with smooth. We'll get it like that eventually, but this would be a cool little place to ride the mowers up and down. It's pretty steep right here. It'd be a nice little little play track right here. To see, you know, because it's pretty steep, and we've got something else going on here. I don't know if that's a rock or if that's another tree trunk. I don't know what that is. But we're gonna go ahead and load up all these vines and crap. I couldn't just scoop them in the bucket because it's so tangled up. But we're gonna just manually put it in the bucket and take it somewhere and dump it out away from here. We got everything loaded into the bucket. As you can see, we're gonna take it down the, down the creek there and dump it on the creek bank.
all she wants. Where are we going to dump this thing? Put it on the side of the clubhouse? Sure. Huh? Sure. got a good amount of rocks here. It's not exactly the easiest thing to do to get them fall in the bucket. But I've done it a few times so I've gotten used to it. We're going to go ahead and load up what we can with the smaller ones we can pick up with our hands, load them in there. But we're going to continue doing this until all the big rocks are gone. guys we've been at it for a couple hours now we've moved a lot of rocks we've made a lot of progress we tore down a lot of this brush took out a lot of these vines as you saw and uh, I just brought you guys along because I kind of wanted to show showcase the, the abilities of a machine like this the Kubota L3301 is by no means a full-size tractor it's by no means a skid steer it's not even a backhoe but it's a little bit of everything and if you use it you know if you use it right it can get a lot accomplished. I would have never been able to move all those rocks and tear all this stuff out by hand in the time this thing did it. But we just dived into this project about two o'clock this afternoon and it gets dark out here about 4.30, 5 o'clock, which it's about five o'clock now. So we're gonna go ahead and continue this project tomorrow. We still got trees to cut down. We've got more branches to haul, more trunks to haul, and more rocks to move still. 
And once it's all said and done and all graded out, we're gonna smooth out this incline here, like I said before, so we can ride the mud mowers up and down this and just free up this area because it's been cluttered up for a long time. It prevents us from using a lot of this area and we're going to go ahead and change that. If you guys out there found this content helpful, informative, entertaining, or all three, I'd appreciate it if you go ahead, like, subscribe, comment in the section down below. And once again, my name's Jason. This is Tennessee Mountain Homestead. And we'll see you on the next one, probably tomorrow.